What's up guys, today we have a long but special video. Uh, we were fortunate enough to get coached by Sadr Dave, who is a uh, professional Chivalry 2 player, all right? He's the captain of Team Mirage. Uh, today he taught me a bunch of dueling tips from uh, camera settings first person to third person, initiative, jabs, kicks, movement, footwork, excel, drags, the whole thing. Um, he does have his own YouTube channel and uh, he coaches as well. He offers coaching sessions. So I'm going to put links to both in the description. So please take a look. Let him know that uh, you uh, you discovered him through here. I'm sure he will appreciate it and to thank him for helping me out. So uh, let's jump into the video. It's a long one, but uh, I'm sure you guys will learn a lot as I did. So uh, let's get into it. As you have experience with Mordhau, I'm pretty sure you have a clear understanding of initiative, right? Yes. In this game, there's a few more mechanics which obviously means that there's a few more instances where you can gain initiative or lose initiative. And also, there are things that I like to say bypass initiative, um, and so you'll need to learn those as well. The first thing that, uh, that came to mind was uh, first person versus third person. What's your opinion on that? Um, the overwhelming majority of the competitive community uses third person. I don't think that first person is terrible, um, I do think that it is worse, and I do think that it is the worst even compared to other first-person perspectives in other slasher games, uh -huh. but it is totally usable. Now, especially if we're considering team-based modes or modes where you have to worry about lots of stimuli that isn't just a guy in front of you, the implications of third-person become pretty obvious because you can kind of guess I yeah, mean, you can, you, you can more, quite, yeah. you can see behind you. <laughs> yeah. For example, if I just go right here and you're in third person, you yeah. can see me. In yeah. first person, you can't. <laughs> that's already, that's already like a, a, a freebie right there. Yeah. Um, but there's a lot of other aspects to it. It's just a lot clearer. Um, the angle that you can see at in third person is very generous compared to other slasher games. And the angle in first person is very restricted compared to other slasher games. So it's kind of just a really, really good viewing angle Would and if we're considering consoles um honestly yes you would think that first person would be uh like the better dueling perspective and for a lot of players it is um and definitely third person the, the i guess you can say the hmm the disparity becomes a lot smaller with third and first when you are considering duels but for some reason uh, the competitive community still chooses to run a third person primarily in competitive for okay. duels and Elf Last Team Standing and Team Objective, etc. But I definitely would say if you're talking about duels, first person is a lot less worse than it is in Team Objective or Last Team Standing. Gotcha. So, first things first. You understand initiative, you know how it works. Yep. Reposts grant initiative. That's pretty obvious. Works just like Mordhau, wouldn't you agree? Yes. Okay. Counters also grant initiative, but it's important to understand that in this game, feints and heavy attacks do not count uh, towards that gained initiative. Although you are, you know, granted initiative from doing a repost or a counter, you are not granted initiative if you decide to transition that repost or counter into a heavy attack or a feint, or even a feint to a heavy attack. Because it's too slow? Exactly. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to attack you and you're going to repost me and I'm going to combo you and you're going to see that obviously your repost beats me. Okay. Ready? Yeah. So because reposts grant initiative, it beats out my combo. But now I want you to do a repost to faint to heavy attack. Ready? Okay. So obviously that doesn't work. So you're going to have to be extremely careful maintaining your initiative in this game because it's a lot more loose than yeah. in the past games because there's more options. Got it. And re would you, do you not agree that in Mordhau, uh, successful attacks grant initiative? Yeah, you can combo and uh, just keep yeah. attacking. Yeah, exactly. As in, if you land a successful attack, it's your turn to attack afterwards. Yes. In this game, jabs are so fast that you can actually beat the overwhelming majority of combos if the enemy does not space properly. So what I would like you to do is I would like you to just combo me normally. Go ahead. So you can see that I'm able to jab you before your combo hits me. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that happened. 
comboing still grants initiative. It just grants initiative, but you also have to keep in your head, okay, I can't faint the second attack, and I can't make the second attack a heavy, and I can't make it a faint to a heavy. You can see even if you make your attack as fast as possible, they can jab you before your next attack. What I want you to do is I want you to try and jab me after I hit you, okay? Yep. Ready? Yep. Ah. And so you can see that jab actually opened you up to a follow-up strike. And because I went away from you, right, but kept my weapons attack within range of you, I was able to get that guaranteed follow-up strike. So a good thing that I would tell you to do is... When you can read that your enemy is going to jab you, and trust me, a lot of mediocre duelists jab immediately <laughs> after they get hit, right? Because yeah. they want to steal back that initiative. It's you can habit. footwork. Yes, yeah, so it's a very bad habit. You can footwork away from the attack and get uh, get a free hit on them. Um, other people that like to just stab and then stab, you know, stab from afar, uh, which is also very good, and that can allow for. Some very good gameplay as well with the Messer. That would probably be your best option, but I encourage you to do whatever you feel is right. So this is a pretty safe option because even if I'm wrong, he can't touch me. You know, so let's say he doesn't go for a jab, right? All I do is miss. And fortunately in this game, misses don't cost stamina like in Mordhau. So you can just swing uh -huh. once and it's free. Okay. Actually, not only are they not costly, you regenerate stamina while missing. Ah, uh, <laughs> so, okay, okay. Uh, you really have to work to break someone's stamina in this game. Okay. How about you go ahead and try this on me? So what you're going to do is you're going to try and hit me and then get me before I jab you with the second strike. Ready? Yep. Yeah, let's try that again. Remember, you're going to have to keep me within your weapons range, but outside of jab range. I call that a Goldilocks zone, basically where you're trying to get an optimal range while being outside of theirs. Um, here. So... You're going to have to not be hit by my jab, but still hit me with your messer. Okay. Ready? Go ahead. Okay, so okay, so cuz you're waiting a little bit, right? Yeah, yeah. If if I do it immediately, then I'm going to I'm just going to miss you. Uh, okay. That was good. So you kept me out of range long enough to where I had to hold off my jab because if I did it immediately, I would have missed you. And then by the time I actually got close enough to use it, your animation was already far enough in that my jab wouldn't, uh, it wouldn't come out before your weapons release window hit me. Okay. And that's a great way to utilize footwork to continue comboing because combos in this game are not free against good duelists. They're just going to pop you out of it. Okay. Well, in this game, basically blunt weapons on light attacks do not pass through enemies like stops. normal weapons. Yep. They just stop. But on heavy attacks, they do. A really good benefit to hit stop, though, is increased combo time. Because the hit stop ends the animation early, you can start the next animation faster in the combo. So this is a normal combo. And this is a hit stop combo. Oh, okay. It's like stops happening. So you can see exactly. Or however far through uh, it lands. Okay. And that means that you kind of skip the recovery of the attack, but it doesn't always stop. In other slashers, when people block attacks, that stops the attack. In this game, it does not. So if you block my attack real quick, yep. you can see it just keeps going, right? That means you can actually swing through multiple players even if they're blocking, which is really important to know because normally in every other slasher that can only be done on successful attacks you know okay you can hit through multiple people but only when they don't block your attack in this game if they block your attack it actually brushes off of their weapon and goes on to the next person okay even if it's blunt so this does not stop this this hit stop weapon does not stop on your weapon it only so stops if i land a successful attack it's only on a hit exactly because you want your weapon to hit as many people as possible yeah. obviously Mm -hmm. So if someone blocks, it's important to know that you can keep the swing going, keep any attack going through them. Oh, Unlike okay. every other slasher where if they blocked it, it would immediately stop. In this game, counters stop animations. So pay attention to my guy attacking. Go ahead and block this. You can see I don't stop, yep. right? I, I, I finished the swing, but now I want you to counter this swing. Ready? And pay attention to my guy. 
you see the animation just stops. Staggers you, yeah. Exactly. So that's why it's important to understand this because now you know, okay, is it going to go through? Is it not? And that also is important when you're attacking one person as a group or when you're attack being attacked by a group. Ready? We're going to go ahead and do some duels. All right. <laughs> good fight. Very good fight. So you've already gotten to the point where you're pretty um capable. I can see that. Thank you. But there are some things that are opposite in this game compared to Mort How. I noticed that you kicked me and you actually still tried to attack after <laughs> Yeah, and Mort How, when you land a kick, you yeah. usually get a free hit. So of course, like, yes. That's a bad so habit that I have. <laughs> here's a good thought process to have. Think of the the jab in this game as your new kick. Mordhau, think so. Jab functions almost identically to kick does in Mordhau. Does that make any sense? Sure. It's yeah. like a little a little a little thing. You, you know, boom. You you know you do some damage and then you get initiative. Yeah, it it's flows, exactly it like jab, like a like a kick. Yeah. Yes, but it's obviously a lot easier to land than a kick. True. In yeah. this game, you can repost jabs to gain initiative. So if you jab me and I block it. I get initiative. Does that make any sense? If I choose to repost afterwards. Wait, you can repost a jab? Yes. Okay, okay. So that's important to know um, because although avoiding jabs is very cool and beneficial because it makes them lose a lot of stamina if they miss a jab, um, it's still better to repost it because that grants initiative. I wouldn't, I, let me not say it's better, um, but it's easier. That's at least for sure. It's easier to repost a jab, in my opinion, than it is to avoid it and then uh, attack them afterwards. Okay. But to each their own. Do what you believe is easier. Okay. Let's continue fighting and I'll see if I can poke holes in your uh, style so far. So far, I see that you're pretty good at maintaining your guard and not letting attacks get through you. I think that at the moment, probably because of your experience in Mordhau, mm -hmm. there's not a lot of implementation of jabs and kicks. Let's <laughs> continue. Or I felt like I jabbed. Um, I'm not sure if it came out. No, no, you did not jab. Okay, okay. Maybe I was. But you can that. crouch jab. So I don't know if you remember this, but back early in Mordhau and in all other slashers, um, there was actually a very good amount of hitbox manipulation that could be done by moving your character model. Yep. If you looked up, you could you know crank your uh, crank your torso back, and if you looked down, you could crank it down. But now in this game, you can see that you kind of only move your hitbox by the neck yep. or by the chest area. And that doesn't allow for a lot of manipulation of your hitbox. But if you crouch, right, depending on the direction you crouch, you can actually move your hitbox uh, for a very small amount of time. So you can lean backwards by crouching while moving backwards, lean to the left, lean to the right. Even though left and right are kind of just memes and they, <laughs> they don't really do much, but leaning backwards is definitely very... Um, important because if you attempt to jab, yes it's very good at avoiding stabs and other types of attacks and most importantly jabs so if you try and jab me right now um i can reliably lean backwards oh wow well. okay i'd have to like <laughs> fall down exactly yes you would actually have to crouch downward um and aim properly and even then you might not be able to reach depending on the class difference and speed difference but you know it takes a lot of practice. Yeah. Is it? Is this more? Uh, can you react to this? Is that possible, or is it more like a prediction thing? 
almost everything in this game, in my opinion, is based on mind games and reading rather than hardcore reaction time. But it most certainly helps to react fast. That's for certain. I, I didn't notice. Look, I feel like uh, when I duel in Mordal, it's a lot of there's almost like a 50 50 game where it's he's either going to excel or he's either going to drag. I feel like this game, it's um, you, you get to survive a little bit longer and you get to like, uh, like you said, mind game the opponent a little bit more. Like, uh, is he going to kick? Is he going to jab? Is he like... Oh, yes. Mordhau is much more based off of hard reading yeah. than this game is. Specials are an entirely, like, foreign concept. No other slasher has done them. And they work completely differently, kind of outside of the combat system. Basically, by pressing the special attack button, you perform a really strong attack that cannot be feinted or canceled. And it can also not be countered or reposted. Okay. It will stun your opponent... Uh, for a very small amount of time. Uh, but in that time, they can't do anything. And you cannot combo from a special. But you can combo to a special. Ooh. So you can do like, you know, an attack and then lead it into a special. Um, but you cannot do anything after that special. And so you can go and lean a special on me and see how it works. It does a massive amount of damage and therefore a massive amount of stamina damage. Um, and it is very cool. Although they're pretty hard to land in a fight because you can't really, they exist in neutral, meaning they don't really have initiative or lack initiative. You can't repost a special, you know, mm -hmm. you can't, you can't repost a special and you also can't do a special as a repost. It kind of just is a thing. Are they good? Depending on the weapon? Yes. I would okay. say the Messer special in particular is very good. Um, most people say that the Morningstar and May special is amazing because it kind of goes around you in a circle and having good width with your special is pretty important because the turn cap on them is very strict. You'll notice using them, you can like barely turn. Okay. So, you know, it's very important to uh, properly aim them or even guess where your enemy is going to be while using them. Thank you. So I noticed that you're pretty eager to counter. <laughs> is, that a, is that bad? It can be. It can be. Fainting is the... It is definitely the main, uh, you know, uh, strategy against counters. And it works pretty much only against individuals who are trying to counter all the time. Now, you need to change your counter strategy depending on your opponent. Sometimes you'll need to counter patiently, meaning you wait until longer in the release window to counter. And sometimes you'll need to uh, be a little bit more preemptive with your counters, right? Uh, because they might uh, be doing accelerated attacks. And that's really what the game is about. Kind of like with drags, right? You would obviously wait longer to counter a drag and you would not wait as long to counter an acceleration. Okay, so is the is the game centered around counters or like how bad is it to just hold parry and just wait for it? It is extremely bad. bad Ca you'll you'll notice that stamina drains very quickly as you hold parry. So I would like you to uh, I would like you to just go ahead and hold block for about like three seconds, right? Go and just count three seconds and see how long it, how much stamina you lose. Yeah, it's like it's pretty much ha like half of it at least. Yeah. So now I would like you to block this attack and see how much stamina you lose. Ready? <laughs> so it's not really that much, um, but holding stamina is basically equivalent. Like, oh, sorry, holding block is basically like equivalent to uh, the amount of stamina that you would lose fighting a weapon Can sometimes. You hit me again? Yeah. So it can be pretty bad. Mm -hmm. Let's so, continue. So when you counter it refunds the stamina cost countering is actually worked? stamina neutral so what that means is countering costs eight stamina to activate and then it rewards you eight stamina for doing it successfully okay but <clears throat> if you didn't notice you're actually regenerating stamina throughout your entire fight that's why it seems like counters gives you stamina because you're regenerating and then you're not losing any stamina from blocking oh, it make goes any sense up as you're swinging even yeah yes so you gain stamina throughout the fight entirely okay. um, and consistently, always. 
Um, there are some times when you don't regenerate stamina. Like if you crouch, you'll notice you don't regenerate stamina while crouched. And then it has to restart. Um, you also you also typically lose stamina faster than you regenerate it. And obviously, you don't regenerate stamina while blocking okay. or holding block. So you do have to land a few counters if you want to win the duel. Uh, yes, if you want to win a duel against a good player, you have to reliably counter. Otherwise, like he's just going to spam you down and you're going to run out of stamina if you're just like exactly or he's, he could kick you uh, i guess yeah mm -hmm. ready yes the leader needs only 10 more <laughs> Oof, that was brutal <laughs> now when it comes to guard breaks they can be very dangerous which is why i promote not panic blocking to the best of your ability in this game panic blocking is even more severe than the other games because of how uh how you can just kind of hold it down and drain all your stamina mm -hmm. if you're not uh being more conservative with your stamina so definitely be careful to not hold it too much it's exactly we're still exactly. trying to tap it yeah we're still trying to tap it just like any other slasher it's just holding it is kind of uh you know I don't want to call it crutch because even good players do it. It's just worse than tapping it, I guess. Ooh, nice. I, you I can noticed, also see uh, that. Yes. Oh, I was gonna say I uh, in the duels that I've done yesterday and just now, I I feel like the uh, the stab has a really really low like turn speed. As you're, I oh like yes, I, I, I miss them much more than in Mordal. So in this, in these types of games, slashers, we have what's called a turn cap on every weapon, yeah. and some weapons have more severe turn caps than others, and stabs and overheads have more severe turn caps than swings. So it can be very difficult to attack an enemy uh, when you know you're trying to track them, and the turn cap is holding you back. So for example, I'm just going to run around you. Go and just try and stab me, but don't move. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's tough. It's extremely tough. So you're going to have to get used to not just tracking the enemy, but also anticipating their movement and acting on that anticipation rather than just relying on your ability to track them. It's not a point-and-click adventure game. It's a, yeah. uh, a mind game, <laughs> you know? Yeah, you, if they're you, going you to... to if they're go yeah. Exactly. If I'm going to... So, like, go ahead and stab me, you know? If I'm going to, like footwork around you right you need to be ready and not just tracking me you need to know where i'm gonna be yeah 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 i see what you mean now because i, I obviously I've missed those a lot in the, in the duels that i've done of course and you also can use your footwork as well so while you may not be able to turn exactly right super fast while stabbing you can move into it true and then combine that with turning right yeah that's a good point let's go What's that swing you on the on that side? Was that an overhead or a side swing? That was just a side swing. And you started with an overhead? Um, I don't <laughs> remember actually. <laughs> Not because it felt like a side to side, but yes, side to sides can be done. Okay. You can do a stab to stab, and you can do an overhead to overhead, and a swing to a swing. Um, you'll have to set binds for yourself, <laughs> but the default bind should be Alt. I actually use the default bind. Basically, what you're going to do is you're going to press Alt and then the same button mid windup. Oh, okay. there you go. Okay, okay, okay. I see now. Right. Yeah, a lot of people like to use custom binds. I actually like default. So, <laughs> got it. Hey, okay, before we start, one second, because I th I thought you were doing side to side like a faint, but I I thought I you couldn't. Actually, I thought it was only like side oh, to yes, overhead yes. or like yeah. yeah this is a big distinction from Mordhau being able to do the same type of attack to the same type of attack. Okay. Ah, there now it makes more sense. Oh, nice. So you can see, you're always going for counters, so I go for those very quick feints. Okay. I feel like a, a jab in there could have been good, too, if I feel like I'm getting spammed down like this. 
Yeah, most definitely. Mm-hmm. But you need to be wary because if they are baiting a jab, sometimes they could just block it and then get initiative off of that without having to worry about all the stamina damage that a normal attack takes. And if I were to land a jab, then I, I gain initiative? Exactly. Okay. But you wouldn't just know. Just imagine it. Imagine the jab as a fourth attack. Oh, that was a so you can see that special. Yep, the specials have very distinct animations from the rest of the you know overhead stab slash, um, and like I said, they cannot be canceled or fainted. Once they are activated, they're activated. So once you get used to them, it can be pretty easy to punish them, but they are pretty powerful. Like I said, you can't you know you can't counter them. Uh, I can't counter so, it. Okay. You cannot. So I just have to uh, just take it, pretty much. Just take it, or dodge it, or do whatever you got to do, or even interrupt <laughs> it. That was good. You need to be really quick to follow up on that uh, on that guard break. Okay. So when you guard break someone, they're going to be stunned, which allows you to get a free hit, but it isn't. Uh, it isn't a very long time or a large window. Okay, You'll need to follow right up on that guard break really quickly. Yeah. It's in jabs. Like I said, they are part of the combo system. So the same way you can combo an overhead to a stab, to a slash, to an overhead, to an overhead. You can also combo a slash to a kick, to a stab, etc. Right? So once you get that guard break, you should immediately combo to another attack. Does okay, that make any sense? The swing combos off of the kick that you just landed. Exactly. Yep. Which will make it come out as fast as possible. This game works off of input queuing. Like most games that, you know, like most fighting games, I mean, like you can queue up your combo okay. because the game's so fast that <laughs> so you can't really, uh, you know, reliably do it otherwise. Yeah, you're not going to do like a frame perfect uh, after it. Exactly, yeah. We don't need to do frame perfect here. We just queue it beforehand. Yeah, so as soon as I land the kick, I'm just spamming left click. <laughs> That's how it works, right? Um, Pretty much. You, you have a release window and a wind-up window, and you want to activate it within the release window of the kick. The release window is the window where you're recovering, um, and it's not doing any damage. Okay, you still have, okay, you have quite a bit of time, actually. Yep. I thought it was tied, tighter than that. So you see there, that's actually a bad habit a lot of people have. They jab, and then they try and follow up that jab as soon as possible. But you didn't land that jab successfully. I blocked it. Okay. Meaning I can repost it, meaning I have initiative, not you, meaning I get the hit. Okay. Right? So... You, you need to really be careful because you need to see, did I actually land that jab? And if the answer is yes, then fine, you can attack. But if the answer is no, 100% of the time, that dude's probably going to beast mode on you <laughs> and okay. hit you. What happens if I land a jab, but you're not swinging? Is it the same, same, same thing? What do you mean I'm not swinging? Yeah, just like this. Yeah, like I said, successful jabs grant you initiative. Okay. Unsuccessful jabs grant them initiative. Okay. Because reposts grant initiative, right? We know that reposting gives an, you know, grants initiative. Okay. I, I thought there was in like it. a different effect if if I caught you while you were swinging or if you're just like in neutral. Oh, no. Yeah. If you land a jab successfully, meaning you do 10 damage and you hit them, you get initiative every time. Okay. Got it. Ready? Yes. Oh, nice. Thank you. So I also see that you're dodging quite a lot. And dodges can be good, but they also are a big drain on stamina. Okay. They feel good to use. <laughs> they are nice good. to use. <laughs> Unlike in Mordhau, everyone has dodges here. Um, like, at all times. So, you know, no perk needed, no special class needed. Yeah. Oh, that's a rough kick right 
Victor. That was a Mordau kick coming out. <laughs> yes, I'll actually show you. There are actually two different types of kicks, but I doubt that you'll use the other one often. So, if you do a normal kick, right, just looks like this, you know, kicks. Uh, but if you look down, you'll actually do a short kick. And it does the same damage and has the same properties, but it comes out slightly faster and has less range. Okay. Little pro MLG pro tip. You still look Pretty good forward. to do some to somebody not really far, no. A little bit, yeah. I feel like everyone Ready? would use the, the low kick, though, no? Because it's just too, faster. Too little range. Uh, okay. So if the guy's walking back, you just... You exactly. Just Got it. Yep. Tough jab. Less range than I thought. Oh, <laughs> the heavy. So did you think that was a swing? It looked weird. <laughs> yeah, so that's the special. Oh, okay, okay. Oh, that's right. Eventually, I... you'll get used to all the animations. Um, but yeah, remember, you can't counter specials, so they'll just straight up hit you. Okay. Although yeah. they are pretty slow. The so... character yells too, right? Uh, I thought I yes. heard him yelling, yeah. Each voice actor has like a distinct special attack noise okay. that they make. I guess it comes with time too, just knowing the animations of exactly the weapons and the... So again, you saw how you tried to attack after you did that jab? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I see it now. I see what you mean. Oh. Make sure not to ever try and capitalize on something that is like, that gives them initiative. That's what many people would consider gambling. And it basically, you know, yeah, that's not, gambling itself is not a bad thing, but it's just, you should do it with the understanding that, okay, they can basically just get a free hit on me if I decide to do this. Yeah, I just get punished right away. I need to be more patient with these counters. Yeah. I feel like I get hit a lot with those. Like this. <laughs> yeah, so that one was a heavy attack, but you decided, but I think you made, like you maybe thought it was an overhead. I, yeah. So I you tried to, yeah, it was not. But I can see it can get confusing when someone's closer up. In general, right? This is a general rule. It doesn't always mean that it's true. Um, the closer someone is to you, the more difficult their animations are to read. And the farther someone is away from you, the easier it is to read. And you kind of have to space yourself according to what you want to happen. Obviously, that doesn't mean always keep them far because you also need to make your animations harder to read for the enemy too. Okay. So you have to kind of space yourself as you see uh, necessary. Do you have any tips against someone who is just running at you, holding W all the time? Jab. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just punish him. Oh, I did it again. <laughs> yep. I did it again. So yeah, you have to be very careful with your jabs. They do not have that much range. They have decent range, but they're not that f they're not that far reaching. Oh, <laughs> brutal. Yeah, you're very low there. <laughs> when you have five health, it's very easy for somebody to finish you off with a kick. Okay. You, you, you have to avoid them. You can't just block them or counter them. A little 360 action, okay. Yeah. 
See how it is. Oh, nice. Thank you. So you saw there that you, when you tried the special, I immediately just like popped you out of it oh. and then kept fighting. Okay. Because after you recognize it, it's pretty easy to follow up. So as soon as you see a special, uh, this one you could react to it because you, you just know the animation and you're used to. Exactly. Person. Yeah. Okay. Well, it's a very distinct animation for your messer. You literally bring it under you and then swing it up. Mm, true. Um, also, uh, specials actually cost stamina. Normal attacks in this game don't cost stamina if you land them. Specials do. So it's very important to know that. They do a lot more damage, but they take stamina. Okay. Oof. Yeah, so that was holding parry too much. Yeah. So there I fainted to a kick instead of just kicked. And oh. that made you hold your guard up a little longer. Oh, okay. Okay, I have to start doing that too. So. Oh, okay. I see what you mean. You just left click and then just kick mm -hmm. right away. You can faint anything to anything pretty much. Okay. You go like this. Like that. that. That feels really strong. Yeah, it can be. Like that. There you yeah. go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It I feel like, yeah, it comes out faster because usually what I would do is left click and then hit Q to cancel and then I would... Yeah, so you don't that. really... In this game, you don't really utilize cancels much. There are a lot of players who... Well, not a lot of players. There's a few dozen players who do utilize cancels um, at a very high level, but for the most part, everyone faints rather than cancels. Okay, yeah, that's the Mordau uh, reflex right here to just like... Spam mm -hmm. Q and <laughs> that's fun. Yeah, that works. But well, it does come out. It comes out faster. Uh, I feel like it comes out faster if I just faint into it. Mm -hmm. So, are you countering pretty much all my attacks right now? Like most of them, yes. Yeah. Okay. So I'm still panicking a little bit, so I don't have time to like read the little pop-up in the middle of the screen that says countered but uh <laughs> i'm just, yeah I'm, i was assuming that you would or i guess you're counting every, so much everything you else. can actually there's some very like clever ways they make it visible if you notice uh go ahead and block this attack yeah. and now attack me blue sparks mean block and then go ahead and attack me blue uh means counter uh, and then red means special, so go ahead and block this. Okay. I might have to turn on the, the colorblind options because I am colorblind, <laughs> but I can't see uh, I can't see them like very distinctively. Okay. I'll I'll play that. I'll play around. Well it also has some unique noises as well. So if you lend the kick, I can't punish you, even if I start swinging. Um, you, they get the recovery back a lot faster. Yes. Okay, so in, in anything in this game, if you land, uh, your recovery is canceled. So I'll go ahead and give you an example. So you can block um, that way. Basically, yes. Okay. But it is still stamina intensive to constantly kick. So you can't just chip someone down over and over again. You'll lose all your stamina doing that. Okay, I, I thought that if... Uh... As soon as you used it, so if I do this, okay, I can block like pretty fast after. Yep. But if if I just completely miss it, then you could punish it. Exactly. Well, I, it also depends on the speed of the, my weapon, the range. I, you know, when sure, I attack sure. you, <laughs> a million factors.
Yeah, see, like like this, I felt like I, I released it really quickly, but mm -hmm. not enough. Okay. Interesting. I felt like there's a lot to learn here. I like it. Oh, yeah. I love the game. And not gonna lie, when I first watched uh, like videos of this, like I started getting interested in it like a week ago. When you're watching it without knowing everything, it looks, I don't want to say easy, but like, it feels like it's easier because, oh, you're you're thinking, oh, I can just hold block and then <laughs> attack and then hold block. But because a lot of my viewers, I, I noticed in the comments were saying like, oh, the combat is simple and like, oh, yeah, no, it, but they I, are, I, they, <laughs> yeah. I don't mean, I mean, I, I can understand why they say it's simple. There are aspects of this game which are simplified from Mordhau, right? Mm -hmm. But there are other complexities that exist to balance it out. So, for example, in this game, once you faint, you can't faint again. In Mordhau, you can faint indefinitely. But you can kind of use cancels as a form of fainting. So I can do a cancel swing to uh, stab, to faint to overhead, right, to create a triple faint. Or I can use cancels as much as I want. So in that regard... You still have that depth from the Mordhau system, but then there are other areas which I consider even more complex than Mordhau, like the active parry system um, and the countering and the heavy attacks. I believe that they allow for um, a lot of depth, and I definitely would not consider this game simple by any means. I would consider it accessible. Because of how held parry works, it allows for a lot of noobs to exist and live a lot longer. That's um, true. But, but they don't win, you know? Yep. So... For example, in Mordaf, if you put a pro against the noob, the pro wins 100 times, noob wins zero times. For right? sure, in like 10 seconds. You, exactly. But in this game, the pro still wins 100 times. It's just he takes 30 seconds instead of 10 seconds to kill him. Yeah, you because feel like you can noob, fight back a little bit. Exactly, because the noob can just hold block until he runs out of stamina. Yeah, especially when in, like the other in team game, fights where you could just like back off a yes. little bit and regen and then come back. And of fight. course, yes. It's 100%... Um, arguable that this game is easier quote unquote but you're not gonna win against the better players you're just yeah. gonna survive longer <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah and what that does is that longer survivability allows them to learn more it makes the game more accessible yeah but it does not make it less competitive and it does not make it um significantly simpler i believe that it has as much complexity as mordhau if not more um i don't want to say more but i i'm they're you different know, games, I'm, yeah. I see what you mean, but they're, yeah. they're both uh, they're they're both difficult. As soon as you start looking at exactly, it. yes, yes. If if a, basically if any Mordhau player um, that plays Mordhau uh, seriously and you know understands the combat system well plays this game, they will not be disappointed by a lack of depth. Is what I'm saying. They will be for pleasantly sure, surprised. Sure. So we didn't really talk about excels and drags. How how much does it matter in this game compared to Mordhau, where it's like the main thing? Oh, significantly. It, it does matter a lot. Of course. You need to counter often to maintain your stamina, and heavy attacks and drags are the main way to make people mistime their counters. So, for example, just go ahead and try and counter me. So there, obviously, you didn't counter in time, okay, so you lost stamina. Let's, let's try that again. Ready? Okay. So, depending on how I attack, right, if I decide to do an acceleration and you don't counter in time, you lose stamina. If you decide to counter too early and I drag it, you lose health because you mistime your counter and your your guard drops and you get hit. So it's a constant battle of basically, you know, countering early or late. Now, the difference is, or I guess why people would say this is easier is the difference is in, let's say, Mordhau. If you accelerate, you're hoping that you can accelerate them before they even pull up their guard, yeah. right? Yeah. To get damaged. And then if you drag it, you are trying to drag it to where they block too early and then their guard drops and you also deal damage. In this game, it's either you deal damage or you deal stamina damage rather than you deal damage or deal damage. Does that make any sense? Okay, so if you're excelling, you're trying to hit them before they start to counter or is that... Exactly, doing? exactly, right? So uh, this is obviously all at the high level, right? At the low level or at the media, the, even at the mid level, right? When you're excelling, you also are hoping that they don't block in time at all. But at the high level... Um, and because people can hold block, uh, excels are not really so much about getting damage in, they're about getting stamina damage in. Okay. And if we go back to the basics really quick, because I just noticed when you said counter, when are you like supposed to start your counter? Is it in the windup? 
Um, it's it's solely dependent on their animation. Obviously, if you set it up in the release phase, right, of their attack, then it's guaranteed that you're going to land it pretty much, unless they manipulate it crazy, oh, because can't they can't faint. Exactly, yeah. they can't faint it or cancel it. But in the wind-up phase, they can faint, cancel, or transition it into a heavy. So there's a lot of variability there, which means your counter is uncertain and preemptive. Okay, so the 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 actual time. Let, let's say you're not manipulating at all, and you're just like doing a normal swing. My window to counter is actually pretty big because I can I could start it in the wind up and in the release. Yeah, and you'll still be fine. Now oh, okay. it's also important to note that the counter window uh, is dependent on your weapon. The faster a weapon is, the smaller the window for the counter window, and the slower the weapon is the longer the counter window so go and take this knife right yeah. and go ahead and just take it off the ground and Sorry. then go ahead and try and counter and you'll see that the window is actually very small you mean you're gonna swing at me no you can just check the window oh is it the light that's popping up like the oh light. yes i'm sorry i'm sorry if i didn't inform you <laughs> yes yeah uh, that those yellow lines on your crosshair are your counter window as long as those yellow lines are apparent, then you're in your counter window. And when those yellow lines are gone, you're no longer in your counter window. Interesting. So you can notice that the Messer has a much longer counter window than the knife. Um, and even the Highlander will have a much longer counter window than the Messer. Okay. So it's important to know your counter window. Now, unfortunately, I don't even have any exact values for you. Mm -hmm. um, they do, the game doesn't tell you. But just know slower equals longer counter window. Faster equals shorter counter window. Okay, so how do I use that window to actually do the counter? Do I have to time it with when the weapon... Uh, Their weapon needs to strike your counter hitbox as those yellow lines are visualized. Okay. Can you can you swing at me for like a few times? Yes. Okay. And if I do it like too early... Oh, oops, sorry about that. It's okay. Okay, I see. All good. So, so if I had the the knife, out, I'd have to be more precise with the exactly with the timing there. Okay. Interesting. I like it. I like it. Mm -hmm. it, feels, it feels satisfying. I like the audio too. Like the the hits are satisfying. The, the oh yes, the audio in my opinion is completely superior to Mordo. Yeah, it, it feels really <laughs> satisfying. It's really good. Mhm. Mm There's a lot of uh, audi audible indicators um, mm -hmm. that are extremely well done and. Make it to where you can tell exactly what's happening by audio alone. Oh, I like it. No, I just All right, to, now I just need to play it for like uh, a thousand hours, and <laughs> then you're fine. Yeah, yeah I'll be good. Well, <laughs> let's do one more for the road. Sure, let's go. Let's end it on a on a banger here. Yep. God. So I noticed that you're not comboing me. That's a good point. You are attacking me, and then you stop, and then you attack again. True. So as soon as I land that hit, I need to just keep going. Exactly. Yes, because if I if I if I choose to, I don't want to do it because it's evil. Um, <laughs> I, I could just attack right after you attack, and then hit you before your next attack hits me. That's true, because I'm pausing in between. Exactly, and and which means if you don't capitalize on your combo, you don't get initiative. Got it. All right. Do you want to end it here? Um. Yep. That's pretty much all our time. Sure. Well, uh, thank you very much. I really, really appreciate it. That was uh, that was really, uh, really informative. And uh, no problem. Maybe we'll do one more in the future. We'll see. All right. All right. Thank you. You have a good rest of your day. You too. Bye bye.